What's going on guys, what's cracking? I know it's been a minute since I've been in a YouTube video. I've just been, well, kind of slacking. Uh, kids, life, I've already talked about before. Let's get into it though. Today, we've got right here, can you see it? See the boxes, uh, Dula Design. They sent me out the new splash shield. So let's go ahead and just open it up, take a look what's inside. Okay guys, so I wanted to lay it out how it would really go in the car. So it's not the prettiest because from the underneath shots, the better look, but I wanted to show it how it should go on the car, right? So you guys have an idea how this should be fitting on. You've got your original belly pan, which you can buy, you know, separate. Uh, it was the original piece you made. I've had that on my car for almost two years now. Held it great and it saved me. It's got a couple dings and bangs on it, uh, but I'd rather hit that than say the belts, uh, the damper on the car, the engine itself. I'd rather beat this up than it would anything else because this is easily replaceable. The engine and all those parts, not so much, don't wanna be straight on the side of the road. That is a big lifesaver. Now he's added this, which also stiffens up the bumper, but acts as a splash shield. You know, keeps water, debris and stuff, again, out of the engine bay. Um, but my biggest point for this is to actually stiffen up the front bumper. Now, that's a big deal to me. That's been an issue. My car has stress cracks in it. Uh, when you start going buck 40, 50, 160, 170, you know, and you got a bumper that really doesn't have anything holding it in, you start to get stuff like this, like the bumper cracked here, I've got stress cracks here, stress crack here. Again, when you're doing that, this bumper is literally sucking under. The mouth in these things are so huge, so you just got a big piece of plastic here with no real support. So as soon as it starts to see wind, it just starts to literally fold under. If you watch any of the fast guys or any fast cars out there, uh, either roll, you know, roll racing or drag racing, you'll watch like the front bumper literally suck under. Um, not good for the bumper, not good for the car's aerodynamics, it's just bad all around. So this is gonna help with that. Um, it is a splash shield, but it also helps with aero. Um, You'd be surprised how bad it is when air gets trapped up under the engine. Actually helps with cooling too. There's a reason why the plastics are there from the factory. So this just, it's like a win-win all around, right? It literally helps you in every shape, way, and form. So very, very cool. Again, comes with every nut and bolt to uh, get this all on. These four right here go to the back. So those four in the very back of the shield, okay? And then it already has the standoffs here and there. It comes with the nuts, little plastic rivets here too, and other standoffs that are inside the package to bolt this all up. Now, some things you guys need to be noted or need to know, I'll show you too when we get up there. The factory plastics, or not plastics, I should say, but the factory aluminum pieces that actually have um, bolts coming down through it, which I'll show you once I get this up in the lift, you need to retain those except for one. Again, there's instructions he includes for this, but I wanted to make this video as detailed as possible. Um, there's aluminum strips that go under there that hold the front lip up and kind of sandwich it on. Uh, you're going to need all of them except for the very bottom middle one. That's going to be replaced by this. This is going to act as your aluminum sandwich and you're going to use these nuts to help hold it on. So again, I'm not going to go too crazy with this, but I at least want to show you guys how it sits out here. Again, pieces here and here, how this all goes on. Very simple setup. I just think it's very cost effective too. If you look at the cost of this, uh, in the description below, it's just, it's very hard to be aluminum powder coated, all done. Other things that I think are neat, if you still have a factory overflow tank and you have the uh, factory battery up front, he's got two little ports right here that you can hook up hoses to that drain directly to this and underneath this. So it's not going in the engine bay either. Very, very cool. So if your overflow tank does actually overflow, it'll spill out underneath the car instead of in the engine bay. Same thing here. This is for the battery tray. If it fills up with water, goes underneath the car instead of in the engine bay. Again, very, very cool. Um, but very well thought out, in my opinion. The other thing is too, everyone's gonna ask, is fit me, Ryan. I've got this inner core, my, I got this going here, there. I'm gonna show you guys. So this was tested with an ETS six inch inner cooler, the Mac Daddy, um, one of the biggest ones out there, and this fits it. Now the only thing I will say guys, you know, depending on your inner cooler piping, if you have it hanging low, that could be a problem. My car shouldn't because I've already got the hole cut here. So it'll go down and over top of it. But if you have it coming from the side or if you just have it hanging low in general, either side, it could possibly hit. Most of you won't have this problem, but the guys were in three and a half or four inch piping, it might be a problem. Uh, when I get it up there, we'll be able to get a little bit better measurement, kind of show you guys how it fits all up and how it looks. So just want to at least reiterate that and kind of tell you guys that is something that could possibly be a problem. We'll know more once we get it on the car. 
Joe takes a lot of pride in his work. He very much overthinks everything. Um, this has, again, been like two years, and it's just because he's been testing and testing and testing and testing, which I really appreciate because I know what it's like when you don't test something and then you find out, like, last minute, like, crap, man, this doesn't fit now. This, this sucks like this. This is miserable. Again, it, it's perfect. It literally bolts up so nice, and it makes me really happy. Uh, again, this will all correlate together. The one thing that is going to be an issue for myself and for anyone else out there, you do need to have these factory plastics too. So I already talked about the aluminum pieces that hold the front lip up. You are going to need these plastics in here. Let's see if this will focus for me here. I don't know if it will, but the factory plastics inside the fender way here, the lower ones need to be there. My issue is I have them, but I actually trimmed off the one piece where these go to. So I might have to buy new ones and I'll explain to you how those work and also show a picture that Joe already has. Um, you're going to want those to help brace this all together. So that is something you can or you're going to want to buy if you don't have them. You can still buy them brand new from Toyota, so it's not a big issue. Um, but yeah, from there, let's go ahead and get this up in the air and I can kind of show you guys what it looks like from underneath and where you need to bolt this all up and how you're going to start and what pieces you start with and then move on to each piece and how it needs to be bolted on. All right, guys, so now it's time to install the panels. And the way I'm going to do this is a little different. now. Um, Joe does actually offer some instructions. So there is PDF instructions that you can get from him, okay? The way I'm going to do this, though, might be slightly different, okay? I'm going to install this panel first, is what you're gonna to have to do, okay? So this has to go on first, but instead of installing these in sec or second, I'm gonna put this on second, and I'm gonna show you why. And again, in my opinion, there's no right or wrong reason for this, because the only thing this really affects is this area here, okay? And then you gotta put the standoffs, which go on the side, but again, the only thing it'll really affect is this spot here, and this slides in there, so, in my opinion, I don't think it'll be a problem. Now, the reason I see why Joel does it this way, putting this on first, because this clamps up and around it, right? It'll pull itself around it. But there's so much room there, it's not really an issue. So I'm gonna show you guys here. Again, first thing we're gonna have to do is install this. This panel goes right here. So it's gonna go right here in the center of the engine in the front part of the par uh, car here. Um, very, very basic. So we're gonna use these holes here. So we get a 10, I'm sorry, yep, a 10, a 10, a 10 and a 10, okay? Now it's gonna kinda hang, I'm gonna probably put one 10 millimeter here to hold it up. Now another thing you guys will notice too, my car's slightly different from the rest of you. So I've got this bracket here and here, one for the intercooler, and this is for my automatic cooler, okay? You guys most likely won't have this, and it's not, I don't think it's gonna cause me a problem. I will, I'll show you guys if it does, but I don't because it should be a pass-through, so that plate will actually hold this up still. I don't see this being a problem, but I'm definitely gonna show you guys a little every step. Um, Joel really, really, really took his time with this. Um, I'm very, very happy, so yeah. Also, his name's Joe. I don't know why I keep calling him Joel. I, I, I'm just all over the place here today, and I, I think I'm so worried about making sure this is done perfectly because I want this to go on in a certain manner so you guys understand. Uh, it's Joe. My bad, buddy. So let me go ahead and put this up here and I'll show you how it's gonna be hanging. I'm just gonna have one 10 millimeter front just so it's not, the flap's not hanging down and bending the metal at all. Okay, so this is the very easy part. Um, I, actually, I think most of this is really easy. Now, that saying, I am doing this with the lift before I did not have a lift. Um, you can see my rusted control arms. I'm getting those replaced here. Uh, but if you can see here, you've got four 10 millimeters that go back on this black piece here. Okay, you need to make sure you have this also. So double check this. Some people have removed this in the past because they see nothing's attached after removing their plastics. So make sure you have this. If not, you can still buy this from Toyota, so don't worry. Again, four tens. And then you're going to move up here. Now up here, you have five spots. You got one, two, three, four, five, that a 10 millimeter is gonna go to. Now I just have one just kind of holding it there just so it's not flapping down because where those four 10 millimeters are, are where these posts are gonna go. So this post, this, 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 and this, are gonna go up through that and hold this on. Now before we do that though, there's something else I wanna show you that goes along with this front panel, okay? This is going to attach to the front bumper. So you can see here again, you have five holes, and the one thing I'm really happy that Joe did, he did make it a perfect circle, right? He kind of oblonged it. Well, why would you do that? Well, it is a plastic bumper. You have these things, they do shift over time. He made it so that you can kind of maneuver, right? Get it exactly where you want, make sure it bolts up right. Very, very smart on his behalf again. He really overthought all of this, very well engineered, very intelligent dude, very nice guy too. One more thing too, if it sounds like I'm talking him up, 
It's because Joe definitely goes above and beyond, not just for me. I literally got to meet some people when I was down in uh, the Myrtle Beach event that literally spoke so highly of him. Didn't know that it had any relationship with Joe at all. And they were just talking about the guy saying how nice he was and how much like he bends over backwards to help them. And I was just like, man, this guy really is that nice and that cool. So not only is it a business that you're buying a quality product, but you're supporting someone who wants to help others, like truly wants to help and like wants to give back to us. So if that means anything to you guys, it means a ton to me. Uh, just a generally good dude. So anyways, I'm gonna get back to this now because you really don't wanna hear me talk about the mushy stuff, right? So this is going to be your new retainer, right? So again, those go in the back, this goes in the front of the bumper. But there's a couple things you need to remove. Well, really one thing. There is this front retaining clip, okay? This has no bolts on it or anything. It just goes up under the lip. What do I mean by that? Well, let's come under here and let me show you. So under here, so this is the front back side of the bumper. You can see the hole there where the mouth would be. You have your top plate, right? On your top plate, it has these little studs on it, right? Those are 10 millimeter studs. There's a total of five of them. This plate here would go up and in like this. Well, the replacement for that now is that piece. This, that piece from Joe is gonna replace this here, okay? So that's gonna go up and under. So there's no need to use this. I wanna make it clear, there's no need for this anymore. Don't throw it away, but keep it in the basement for now, just in case. So you are gonna keep your side pieces, but just the front, you're no longer gonna use. All right, guys, so this is what it should look like next when you put this panel on. Now, I know some people are gonna ask, like, well, Ryan, is it sealed off here? Like, is this gonna hold water? Obviously, this side will be covered here too, but I wanted to show you guys this. So there is a gap, so water comes in, it'll leak right out, and it's the whole way down, okay? And I can fit my fingers up in there, so yeah. Unless you're driving through a monsoon, you're gonna be fine, okay? And then up here, you can see I used a factory bracket, and I put the bolts on there, okay? If we could see here, you can see the factory bracket and bolts coming through. I just need to finish putting this one over here. These are the tighter ones. Now I do have an aftermarket lip, so this is designed to work with the factory, but it will work with an aftermarket too. Just takes a little finagling to get the side ones in there over those little vents. So on, so this one's on, the middle one's on. The only thing we'll have to do here is these holes here. For the side brackets, switch go over here. Now I'm going to have to attach them here and here. That has little standoff brackets, which I'm gonna show you in a second. But I wanted to give you guys down here a little bit lower. Better look at this, look at that. To me, these are the two most vital parts, right? So make sure you get these on tight. And this is the big part for me, right? Like it is, it is on there tight. Like I can literally push on it now before, like my car, I can literally bend the, well, here, I'll show you. Look. I can literally bend the bumper in. Now imagine I'm doing that with my hand there. Now imagine going 100 plus, 150 plus, right? When these cars are really moving, what that does to the bumper. This is now gonna hold, which makes me really, really happy. We have to put on the side pieces. The side pieces here tie in the rest of the bumper. So the side bumper into the plastics. Now I talked about this already, but I don't have the full setup. So my plastics have been cut because I didn't have something like this. The plastic came out and would always catch air and they would actually go back into your tire. So I trimmed mine ahead of time before I knew this existed. So I need to buy new plastic. So I'm going to get this up, but it's not going to be perfect. Now, some of the parts that you have here, and this allows you to make some adjustments. You have your standoffs here, which you're going to have to put on. You get one for each side. So you get a long one and a short one. You get your bolts here too, that they'll go up inside of these standoffs. And then you got some spacers if you need to use them. And these guys here, these are what you're gonna use on the plastic area, right? So you can take your bolts up into it. So these here, okay, will go up into these if you have the plastics. Again, unfortunately, I do not. Um, I do like the fact too, he left these slotted so you can play with them because nothing's perfect, especially when it's plastic and things of this nature. It allows playroom. I love that he understands and has utilized these to the full extent to figure out that, hey, you know, nothing's in a bottle perfect. There's gonna have to be some wiggle room. I love that. And most of the things on this thing are slotted. Some things are perfectly drilled center because it's something that has to either be there or not, but most of it's slotted so you can play with it to get it to line up right. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is put on these standoffs here and you got a short and a long one. So these standoffs are gonna go here on the side. So you've got one here and you got one back here. Now I have an aftermarket lip on this. So this one already had a pre-drilled hold. This one did it. So I'm gonna have to cut this back a little bit here so I can get this up on. And then once I get it up there, I can then put a nut on the top that'll hold the standoff on. Makes it super simple in that way. To make this easy too, the short one goes in the front, the long stud goes in the back. Again, there's pre-drilled holes here. So I got one here and then I'll have one right back here. Again, I'm gonna have to drill that hole, put this on and then I'll be able to put this up in and then we'll go up here. Now, I wanna show you guys this. This is a little thing that happened to me. Something came up 
uh, when we were strapping it down on the dyno, um, we had a little bit of an issue and that happened. Again, that is my fault. That shouldn't have happened. A um, little bummed about it, but it is what it is. The other side's perfect, but I'm not sure what we did, but when we were strapping it on the dyno and stuff, something got caught there and literally bent it down like that. <sighs> Not too thrilled, but it is what it is. Won't affect me putting this together, but it is what it is. Um, and again, we're gonna put two bolts here now uh, once we get the plate up on. So let me put the studs on, and then when we get the plate up, and that'll be it. Again, I trimmed this plastic here because didn't originally have this, so it didn't really work out. But let's get this up on and show you guys how it looks. All right, guys, now I didn't do this side yet. I did this side, but this is what it should look like when done. Again, ignore this, because I had this question too. Um, people were asking like, oh, am I gonna be able to get to my hooks? So let me get down here. Yes, we still have access to your hooks. This was designed to keep that. Now, uh, I did talk to, <clears throat> excuse me, I did talk to Joe and he's uh, thinking about making some longer ones uh, to make this even like better, or uh, just to make things different. Because I personally don't like the stock hooks too, just for the fact, not for this, but when you have an aftermarket lip, which almost every super does, when I try to get towed, it literally smashes this up. And I have one of the smaller ones, um, and it smashes it up. You can see here where it actually bent it a little bit. But this is what it will look like when it's on then. You can see it bolts here nice and tight, and then you come over here, focus, and that's what it looks like in the side. Now the back ones aren't doing anything. These two here, uh, unfortunately, like I said, I cut my plastics. <sighs> I wish, it's my own fault. I feel so stupid now cutting this plastic, but the rest are on there and looks great now. Again, I just have to repeat the process over here, but I'm really happy with this and the car just feels sturdier. So let me, I'm gonna flip the camera around here and talk now. So the car itself just feels sturdier. Uh, the front bumper just feels sturdy. Everything about it just feels just there, right? With my car, like when I'm, I wash or do anything, it just, it's not as rigid. So it just feels flimsy. It feels, I had to put it like when you gut a Civic or you gut it like my Celica back in the day. You just take all the shit. I just felt flimsy. I feel like you're just cutting corners. No one reminds me of when I see the all wheel drive or not all wheel drive, but the all motor class, like Honda guys who strip all their cars, you know, and when they take off everything, just like shaking because they're trying to cut as much weight as they can. I get it. Um, and I, but I don't want that, right? I want the car to feel like a factory car for the most part. When you remove all those plastics, you lose a lot of that when it comes to like the plastic bumpers and stuff. So having this back gives me that rigidity. Plus having the under panel, uh, my personal car, if I can get it up on the lift here today, it's pouring down rain, I just washed it, so I don't really feel like moving them around. But I'd like to get up in the lift. That has seen some serious battle damage. It's got marks and dents all through it, which is what it's there for. It's to keep everything on the engine and everything else safe. I'd rather see that thing get destroyed than all the expensive parts of the engine. You know, rock comes up, this, that, or the other. I live in a you know mountainous area, I live in the Appalachians, and uh, yeah, stuff gets thrown up or I run over stuff or hit animals, which I've hit skunks, that sucked. Uh, it really does help protect your car. So I look at it as not only aerodynamics, but I look at it as like a rigidity and a safety thing for me. Again, that's my personal opinion. The one on my car is all messed up. Um, but I drive the car and that's the point. It is literally designed to be used. Um, and it's taken serious abuse. It's pretty darn strong because I literally hit quote unquote boulder with it. I mean, I literally felt it and I'm like, yep, yeah, that that's it, it's done. But something like that could have possibly saved the car from destroying like the uh, upper oil pan or lower oil pan because it's literally there to protect it and push it down. I uh, dented it pretty good, but I'd rather destroy that dent bat than hurt the engine. To me, that makes more sense. Um, it's easily replaceable, couple 10 millimeter bolts and off it goes. So guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you guys like this product. Uh, again, check it out down below. Go ahead and click and buy one today. Uh, they're already ready to go, ready to ship. They have to make a few little slight changes there. Joe got some in, so don't worry about that, but he'll have them ready for you to ship ASAP. Again, guys, thank you very much for tuning in today and I'll talk to you later. Peace.